Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, I'm collaborating with Nisa Helpline today to present to you this live session on the next pandemic, which is our mental health. Nisa Helpline is a registered charitable organization that provides peer counseling and resource support to vulnerable women in our community to live fulfilling and dignified lives. They take up to 500 calls a month and uh, uh, help women who are battling grief, fear, loneliness, abuse, marital discord, or any kind of other mental health illness. Now, we know that COVID-19 has had a lot of impact on us and the list goes on and on and on. Lisa Helpline provides uh, a toll-free peer-to-peer counseling and emotional support system to women across North America. Since its inception in 2014, the Helpline has received over 26,000 calls from women all over uh, North America from all walks of life seeking help for issues like their mental health. Um, it has ranged from marital conflict, abuse, loneliness, addiction, Islamophobia, self-esteem to COVID-19 and much, much more. NISA Helpline's counselors are trained to provide proactive solutions to our callers and they instill preventive measures with the women that they speak to. They provide resources to our sisters so that they can get the personalized and professional help that they need so that they can become whole again. You can support NISA Helpline in many ways. First and foremost is to share an awareness and make sure that you ch start telling other people about the great work that they're doing. You can also like and share their posts on social media, support them through your donations, uh, which are very necessary because programs cannot continue to proceed the way that they do with the quality that they offer without some financial support. And finally, uh, you can support them through making the offer them. Uh, just an introduction to myself. My name is Hena Mirza. I am a registered psychotherapist here in Ontario and I work with a lot of people who may be going through similar issues that NISA Helpline helps women with um, through the telephone support system. I guess uh, when you talk about next steps then coming to therapist or a professional service provider is what those next steps look like and that's where someone like myself can come uh, handy. Now Alhamdulillah I haven't op have had the opportunity to speak with Nisa Helpline's platform several times on different matters and this time they came to me and they said you know we are as a community we are struggling and suffering because of the post pandemic world and every Everybody has these really confused thoughts and feelings associated with what's next and it's important for us to talk about it now for those of us who were online throughout the quarantine we know that we have been put through a lot of um, material and we've had a lot of information that's been thrown out at us to tell us what to do how to do how to manage how to handle our stress how to start living in a uh, through a pandemic, through a quarantine, but now that restrictions are starting to get loosened up a little bit and you're noticing that different communities, different areas are going into phase one, phase two, and now subhanAllah in some places going into phase three of uh, loosening up the lockdown, this is what post-pandemic world looks like. We see people with masks on the street, we see people who are still uncomfortable when you get a little less than six feet apart. Um, you've noticed a change in the culture within our, uh, on our streets, in our supermarkets, in our stores, and even in our homes as well. We're starting to notice those little changes, those slight little differences that we didn't have before. Now, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah for opportunities like these where professionals can come and reach out to the audience in a mass form and start talking about this stuff and have these candid conversations. You're welcome to leave comments below um, or send me your questions and I'll be able to answer them near the end of the talk. Today, though, the focus is going to be to talk about post-pandemic life and how to manage that stress, uh, whether it's your anxiety or whether that's depression or whether that's mood inflicted, anything that's had a change in our lives. And I'm uh, sure that everyone out there has had some form of impact with the quarantine. Alhamdulillah, if you're one of those who said that the quarantine didn't impact me at all. But most of us uh, who have been in quarantine for the past few months and are now starting to get back into our lives, whatever new form of life that we have, we've noticed that things are not the same as they used to be. And understanding these changes and being able to navigate these changes is what's gonna define the difference between successful transition an unsuccessful transition. Now, just to kind of uh, put something out there, um, 
online lectures are not meant to be a replacement to therapy. If there are people out there who are going to hear this lecture, they're going to take away from it that, you know, okay, well, I, I attended a lecture and I don't need help. SubhanAllah, we're all the best gauge of our needs and uh, how we need to manage ourselves and what kind of help we need to seek out. I am uh, going to talk a little bit about normalizing that post-pandemic experience, but if you're one of those few people who, even after hearing lectures online and, you know, getting that kind of encouragement and inspiration, still feels like they are stuck or having a really hard time transitioning to the new normal, make sure that you reach out for help because no lecture online or workshop can um, replace the quality of therapy that you will get when you work one-on-one -on -one with somebody to get the answers that you're actually struggling with. Using resources such as workshops, online trainings, and videos, uh, and helplines, and support resources is a fantastic way to start working towards your health and healing, but definitely not where it ends. So if you are really struggling and truly going through a difficult and challenging experience, don't hesitate to reach out for the help that you need. Mashallah, there are tons of support systems here in the GTA, not to mention all across North America through the various partners of mental health that are offering their services. Um, now, let me start this lecture or by helping understand what the mental health impact has been of COVID-19 and the quarantine on all of us. If you escaped from this unscathed, and if you escaped from this entire experience unchanged, unaffected, subhanAllah, power to you, but even those of us who are trained to teach other people to help be more resilient, you know, succeed in their transitions and changes and accommodate to stress and challenges in life. Even people who are professionally trained felt the impact of all of this that happened. So subhanAllah, why wouldn't everyone else? You know, why wouldn't other people struggle? Why wouldn't people who aren't trained for pandemics um, have this kind of struggle? Which is why mental health is so crucial as we phase into the different parts of post-pandemic life. Some of the things that are important for us to recognize are the changes from within us. If you're not the same person you were coming into the quarantine, coming out of the quarantine, you need to start recognizing what these shifts and changes look like within yourself. And just to kind of get you on the track of uh, thinking about these shifts and changes, here are the kinds of symptoms that you're looking for. First and foremost, mood-based. What is your mood like now? than it was compared to the person that you were before. What your thoughts and what your feelings are like and how your behaviors are changing. So that's part of your mood. The second thing is fear-based. If you were the kind of person who was fearless before and these things didn't matter, but now you feel that sense of fear, you feel that, uh, uh, you know, that angst, that, oh my goodness, what's happening, that stress that's related to post-pandemic uh, life, fear-based thinking, you have to start understanding, am I more afraid now? Was I less afraid before? How, what are the changes in my fear, uh, my, you know, my understanding of fear? And finally, the third thing I want you to think about is whether you're in a stuck space. So if you're feeling like you're still in quarantine, even though the world is starting to loosen up their boundaries on things of, uh, you know, like the restrictions and uh, when we were asked not to go out and not do certain things, as those restrictions are shifting towards a little bit more freedom, a little bit more, op a little bit more options, are you still stuck in quarantine mode in your head that you're finding it difficult to change and adapt to this kind of change? So thinking of it from three perspectives. First perspective, mood-based, engaging your own mood, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, fear-based, how afraid you are through this, and stuck space. Are you still feeling like you're stuck in the quarantine? Struggling with any one of these three can be indicative of struggles with your mental health. I have a lot of people come and ask me, you know, why is this mental health thing such a big thing all of a sudden? You know, why is it important to talk about it? And let the message be clear out there that every single one of us has mental health. Now, the question is whether it's healthy or unhealthy and how we are on the scale of dealing with our mental health challenges. Look at it almost very similarly to your physical health. If somebody says, oh, I don't have problems with physical health. health. Okay, great. But you do have a physical body which can have a negative health impact on it. 
So similarly, we all have behaviors, thoughts, and feelings. Our minds, emotions are always in action, always in play. Some of us may be in a healthy space. Others may not be as healthy or may not be in the same health space as some of as some people might be. But that doesn't really say that, oh, you know what? I don't ever have mental health issues because somewhere along the line, you are going to notice that your mental health or your thoughts and feelings may be impacted or affected some to a great degree and some to a lesser degree, but we all have to deal with challenges and changes to our mental health. Nobody is immune. Next steps. So if nobody's immune and we all have challenges and we all have changes that we deal with, what do we do in order to prevent ourselves from going down that negative spiral or going down that rabbit hole that leads us nowhere or where do, what do we do with excessive stress, excessive panic, excessive fear? What are the things that we can do to help ourselves come out of changes and challenges in a healthy way? Remember, the pandemic is something that's unique to all of us. We're not used to a world like this before, but what you are used to are challenges and changes. In your life, throughout your years, you've been through difficult situations. You've been through difficult circumstances. You've experienced what difficulty looks like in one way or which form or the other. So remember that perspective that we are all facing something. This post-pandemic world is a collective. We're all facing the same thing or we're all facing the similar types of things that we're having to deal with because of the quarantine. But it doesn't take away from the fact that changes and challenges are a part of everyone's life. So today I'm going to talk about one of the most important things that I feel has helped lots of clients in session. It's helped me as an individual and it's helped my children and my family really adapt to difficulties whenever that we've had to face them. And the key word here is resilience resilience to be able to adapt to difficulties to overcome challenges and to understand that we can build capacity within ourselves to deal with whatever we're hit with so if resilience is the key today if resilience is the word theme word today that we're going to talk with then i'm going to talk to you a little bit about resilience training and in resilience training i want you to learn three parts of it the three parts include identifying, adapting, and overcoming. Okay. The first one, identifying. You can't get over a challenge or a problem or manage your stress or your anxieties or your fears or behaviors or moods. You can't learn to get over them or through them until you know that they exist. Identifying the problem, identifying the challenge is the key to your success in in, in order to help you overcome it. So don't be afraid to self-reflect. Don't be afraid to ask yourself the hard questions and say to yourself, you know, why am I struggling with this? What am I really struggling with? Am I struggling with people around me? Am I struggling with internal mood? Am I struggling with leaving the house? Am I struggling with getting back into work? What really are my struggles? And to be able to identify those is what's going to launch you into the success of resilience. The second thing that I was talking about was adapting. Change happens to all of us. What was that saying that they said that the only thing constant in life is change? Yes, absolutely. So change is going to happen to all of us in different shapes and sizes and forms. But for our ability to learn to adapt to that change, to really look within ourselves and really identify, okay, well, what can I do in my circumstances? How do I adapt here? How do I make the changes that are necessary to keep moving forward and not get stuck and not get burdened and overwhelmed? And the third part to resilience training is to overcome the problem. You're going to have to learn to take it step by step and not beat yourself up if you're feeling like you're struggling with your mental health, if you're struggling with relationships, if you're struggling with your situations, not to let that crowd your thinking, but really just to understand that if I can reflect in three ways, identifying my problems, adapting to the situation and overcoming them to be able to move on in my life and not get stuck or burdened or overwhelmed. Now, I'm going to come towards this from um, a very age-old story that I think all of us have heard over and over and over again, and that's the story of a caterpillar's transformation into a butterfly. SubhanAllah, Allah has put so many signs around us in nature through so uh, so many means of how through our greatest struggles, we achieve 
the best outcomes, but without those struggles, those outcomes don't exist. And so the story of the caterpillar, that fuzzy little bug crawling around everywhere, eating all these leaves that it can, and then all of a sudden at one phase of its life, getting becoming a cocoon and really tightening that space around itself as tight as it can get so that within that cocoon, subhanAllah, Allah puts that nature in that caterpillar to change itself into a butterfly. The story that I'm talking about is this, that if you help that caterpillar and when it's transformed and it's trying to break out of its cocoon and it's pushing and it's trying to get out of it, if somebody comes and helps break that cocoon open and frees the caterpillar from its challenges as a butterfly, it starts flying, but then what happens? Through its flight, it dies because its wings are not strong enough to sustain the challenges of flight, to sustain the challenges of change. And we learn from that example that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tightened the hold on that caterpillar, it was to, in order for it to be allowed to get stronger, in order for it to allow it to adapt, to create the skills necessary so that when it enters the next phase in its life, it has all the skills and the capacity and the training and the ability to be able to succeed as a butterfly. Nobody can intervene into that process and magically make it easier and still see that caterpillar succeed. And we see that in animals that hatch out of shells, in those, sorry, in, <laughs> hatch out of eggs. If you help that baby chick or if you help that animal, you know, by poking your finger into that shell and saying, here, you know, go to freedom, we're going to make it easy for you. What happens? You're actually weakening the animal. You're actually weakening that animal. And through that assistance that you gave it, the, you know, removing that struggle, you actually set it up for failure in its future. So subhanAllah, you know, there's signs all around us. Allah has shown us over and over and over again. Childbirth was so hard and difficult. No matter how it was, it was so hard and difficult. Pregnancy was challenging. All of these things, why? So that out of that hardship comes something beautiful. If you want that beauty in life, if you want that khair, if you want that goodness, if you want that success, if you want that fulfillment of that promise that good things are going to happen to you, then you can't be afraid of the challenges. You can't be afraid of the hardships and you can't be afraid of the stress because subhanAllah, it is sent with purpose. There is not a test that comes upon a believer that is not something that is beneficial to us. So to be able to understand that part and to have that motivated thinking that, you know, this test that Allah has sent, has sent with a purpose and with, a, with within reason with me. I know that a lot of people quote this ayah that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you will not be tested more than you can bear. And so some people sometimes uh, interpret this ayah and they say that, well, Allah is inflicting me with something and I can't handle it. You know, I don't have the skills. I don't have the tools to handle it. And Allah promised that I will not be tested more than I can bear. How does that make any sense if I'm being tested and I'm telling you I don't have these skill sets. I don't have what it takes to get, go through this challenge. But subhanAllah, you have to understand that Allah did not promise that you will not be tested with what you have. Allah said that you have the capacity to get through this. You have the capacity and that's where we have to start changing our thought process that if Allah has promised us, I have the capacity, I have to now dig deep and start motivating that change. I have to start changing. Remember, it does not mean that you already have the skills. It means you have the capacity to achieve those skills. So change that narrative in your head and start changing the way that you think because you do have the ab ability to change yourself, adapt to these changes, adapt to these challenges, look for new skill sets because that's what the promise is. That if you've been given a challenge and if you've been given a difficulty, then that ease is also around you. Just seek it and search for it. Seek it through other people. Seek it through your dean. Seek it through support. Seek it through knowledge, learning, but seek it. Don't stop because stopping means getting stuck. And that counters everything um, of resilience that we deal with through water break.
alhamdulillah i remember doing talks in ramadan and uh running into these like uh okay water break situations but wouldn't be able to drink water so alhamdulillah alhamdulillah for the ability for us to you know, chug down water when we get thirsty okay so now uh moving forward with resilience training um in order for us to be resilient people or for us to be successful at uh, resilience uh, resilient tra resilience training we have to look at the health of three things in our lives because if you're going to find challenges in your uh, ability to be resilient you're also going to see that there are certain parts of your life that are uh, not healthy the first is your um spiritual state so your connection to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're not in a healthy relationship with allah if your uh, relationship with Allah is struggling or suffering or you're not connected the way you want to be connected, then it's going to have an impact on how resilient you can be. To gauge your health with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to look inwardly and you want to ask yourself, am I able to connect and feel peace when I make dua? Am I able to listen to the Quran and read the Quran and really receive from it what it, is being, what it was meant to give me? Am I able to pray my salah? Am I able to associate the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam into my life? The way that the uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the way that he managed his challenges, the way that he managed his difficulties, the way that he managed the problems that were thrown at him. How are we relating our spirituality to our expectations of overcoming our challenges? If you can create that balance for yourself, and that's where you're going to realize that deen and spirituality and religion is something that is always in a state of growth, always changing, always growing, alhamdulillah, sometimes up and down, but subhanAllah is always in a state of growth that you're always trying to improve and get better in some way. So when you do realize that your resilience is dipping and you're noticing that, you know, I don't have the skills and the tools necessary right now to manage what is around me, turn to Allah. Undoubtedly, dua and Allah's support are the strongest means to help us get through whatever we're facing. So rekindle that relationship, nurture that relationship, add on to whatever you were doing, add on. Do more. Wake up for tahajjud. Do more istighfar. Pray extra nafal at, at the end of any prayer. Open up the Quran and ask Allah for guidance. And the easiest, easiest, easiest thing to do is to make dua. It requires nothing. It requires no wudu. It requires no direction. It requires it requires nothing. It requires just a clean, pure heart that reaches out to Allah and says, I'm struggling. Help. And only Allah knows what you need. Nobody else. Only Allah knows what you need. So the first, as I mentioned, um, starting to gauge and look into your spiritual health. The second thing you want to look at is your emotional health. Look within yourself. What are the messages you're giving you? Do you have a, a negative voice in your head? Do you have negative thoughts in your head? Are you your own worst critic? Are you always angry at yourself? Are you always frustrated with yourself? Even through post-pandemic life, are you, are you beating down on yourself that, oh goodness, everybody else seems to be doing okay. I'm struggling. I can't get this right. I, don't, I have all these problems. Check in within. Ask yourself these good questions and these strong questions about, who am I? You know, what is my mood like? What's my behavior like? What is my presence like when I am sitting in a room amongst other people, whether they're my family members or my colleagues or my friends or extended family? What is my presence in the room look like? When people look at my face in a room, what do they see? Do they see a person who is down and depressed and upset? Or do they see somebody who is strong and lively and happy and looks like they're, you know, they're, they're trying what they can do to be their best? What do others see when they see you? Have that awareness. Have that sense of self-awareness that you know who you are, what you bring into the room, and what you bring to other people around you. That self-awareness piece gets severely impacted by the voice in your head. What are the messages you're giving yourself? Are you telling yourself that you've got this? It's okay. It's life. These things happen. We go through changes. I can do it. I'm a positive person. You know, I'm going to get through this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, not sick, just dry throat. You got to clarify this stuff. Post. This is also post-pandemic life. Um, 
So being able to have that emotional awareness and that positive voice in your head that's constantly telling you that you are capable and you've got this. And the last thing you're looking for is your social health. What are the relationships like around you? Are you in a healthy relationship with your family members? Are you in a healthy relationship with your friends? Do you notice that your relationships struggle and struggle repeatedly? So just to have that mental awareness of your spiritual self, your connection with Allah, your connection with yourself, and your connection with everybody else around you. When these things are healthy and you know the state of their health, you are now able to start building and capitalizing on resilience. You're able to turn yourself around into a person who can deal with whatever is thrown at them. Why? Because you have created health around you. You've created a healthy relationship with Allah. You've created a healthy relationship with yourself and you've created a healthy relationship with other people. And now we're going to talk about the real uh, heart of this uh, lecture, the real heart of this talk. I'm going to share with you the resilience training toolkit. Now, those of you who follow me on Instagram know that I had promised this morning that uh, when I do this talk that I'm going to share the resilience training toolkit with the audience. And uh, I find this extremely helpful because um, it's all based off of an acronym and it's going to help you remember what kinds of things you can do to start creating resilience in your own life, resilience towards all the challenges and the changes that you're facing. The acronym that I'm going to share with you is RISE, R-I-S-E, to RISE. In this resilience training toolkit, I want you to remember that if you don't help yourself, nobody is coming to rescue you. We too often depend on external sources for support. That, well, you know what, if my husband did this, or my children did this, or if my parents did that, and we always keep pointing outward and saying, well, if other people were to help me, I would be able to get through this better. But I'm telling you, work on yourself. It starts in here. It starts with you, the person that you are, and the abilities that you have. And subhanAllah, you are not alone. You're not in this by yourself, okay? Allah is with you. And that's the beauty of our deen, that no matter how difficult things are, no matter how challenging our lives are, part of our team involves our reliance and our support with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So really hold on to that as strongly as you can and then use the resilience training that I'm about to talk about ahead uh, and really capitalize and build on yourself as a human being. So the acronym that I mentioned was the word RISE. The R is recognizing the challenges. Self-reflect and ask yourself over and over again, every single day, what are the things that I found challenging today? What got in the way of my health and my happiness? What got in the way of my success? When you start, and that was from earlier on in the talk as well, when you start identifying the problem, that's how you're going to learn to get over it. When you start recognizing the shifts and the changes and the people and the situations and the circumstances, when you start recognizing what's unhealthy, what's difficult, what's impossible, what's problematic, when you start recognizing the problem, only then will you have the ability to do anything with it. Too often I see people in session who will sit there mulling over their problems and their problems and you know they'll say, their mood sorry they'll go that you know I'm really stuck and I'm really sad and I'm really upset and I'm really overwhelmed that's good you're identifying your feelings but where are those coming from reach within yourself to look at what's happening and where the problems are starting from so recognize your challenges R the next letter I in the word rise. I, I stands for implementing change. Nothing goes away. Nothing magically disappears. Oh, subhanAllah, sometimes it does from Allah, but things don't go away. We have to learn to navigate through them. If you're in a challenge, if you're in a difficulty, if you're stressed, overwhelmed, feeling sad or upset through something, 
start implementing the change. <coughs> Excuse me. Asking yourself what needs to be done differently in order for me to get back into that healthy space. What's the action I'm going to change? What's the thing that I'm going to do that's going to create the shift that I need to create to get back into being a healthy, happy, stable, successful person? And that's going to come from within us because there is no cookie cutter formula. Even when you seek out professional help, the therapist doesn't pick up a photocopy of something and you know put it in front of you and say, here, do this and you'll be fine. It's not like that. We all need different things and in different capacities. So by understanding what your problems are, you are only then able to implement the changes that are necessary. And those are the changes that you will know is what's healthy for you and what's unhealthy for you. Sometimes it means learning new skills. Sometimes it means putting old skills aside. Sometimes it's a change in our habits and our behaviors. And sometimes it's a change in our thinking. But implement the change because by standing still, you're not moving forward. You gotta learn to start making changes within your life. The S in rise stands for strength-based thinking. Every single one of us has been given capacity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's something that Allah put in us that is a strength. Identify your strengths and know what kind of strengths that you have. Whatever you are, whatever state in life of you, that you're in, you have not been left with nothing. If you're watching me speaking online, you have a lot already. If you have the ability to hear me, you have, the, you have a lot already. So identify your strengths. Push past that negativity. Push past all of that, well, I have nothing and I have nowhere and I feel really stuck and it's really overwhelming me and it's making it impossible for me to live the life that I want to leave, live. Push past that thinking and identify what strengths do you carry? What strengths do you have? You're a strong person. Every single one of us is. We have strength within us. We just don't choose to identify our strengths. We choose not to look at our strengths. We choose to focus on our problems. Um, I'm going to show you something that I use in session a lot. And uh, it's kind of in line with our stress based, uh, strength based thinking, not stress based. <laughs> Can we edit this? <laughs> uh, strength based thinking. So I show this uh, image to a lot of people when I'm working with them and helping them understand thinking outside of their problems. And I always ask everybody, you know, what do you see when I show you this? And uh, for the most part, the answer that I get is I see a black dot. It's true. There's a black dot. I see it as well. But what I want you to start looking at is all that white space that's around the black. We all have black dots. There it is. We all have black dots in our lives. We all have problems. We all have weaknesses. We all have stressors. We all have difficulties. But we need to start becoming the people who look around the black dot and focus not on it, but focus on everything else that we've got. And these are your strengths. These are your strengths that are going to allow you to overcome that black dot and really put it into perspective. Because if you start looking very closely, the black dot is all what you're going to see. But if you step back and look at it from a distance, you're going to realize that around that black dot is a lot of strength that you carry. And you get to choose. You get to choose if you want to be the kind of person whose vision limits them to just the black dot or if you're the kind of person who gets to see all the white around it. That's where your strengths really lie, in that white space. You have the capacity. You have the ability. And finally, the E in the word rise. E stands for encouragement. You should be your biggest cheerleader. You should be your biggest fan club and your greatest supporter. You need to make sure that the message you're giving yourself is positive self-talk. Encourage yourself through the challenges, through the difficulties, through the problems. Be an encouraging source for your own self. Speak to yourself in a way that is positive. Speak to yourself in a way that you're giving yourself that encouragement and saying, you've got this. 
You know, I can get through this. I have the abilities. I have all of these beautiful resources around me. Most importantly, I have my connection with Allah. I can do this. No matter what the challenges, no matter what the difficulties, I can achieve the best within myself by really reaching in deep and building skills and building capacity and learning to work through my difficulties. So the acronym for the Resilience Training Toolkit is the word RISE. Recognizing the challenges, implementing change, strength-based thinking, and encouragement with positive self-talk. If you, like myself, are the kind of person who is uh, trying to readjust to life post-quarantine and uh, starting to understand that all the new normal that we're looking at is a little overwhelming, it can be, it is for everyone, um, if you're the kind of person who is starting to navigate this new water, um, help yourself by building some resilience. Help yourself by building the skills necessary to overcome challenges and changes because the challenges and changes will come to you over and over again in life, packaged it in different ways. But the ability that you have to succeed through life is purely based and dependent on how you learn to overcome things that come in your way. Now, um, just to kind of go over a couple of things is uh, to help everybody sort of, you know, kind of wrap their head around the entire talk. Um, it's absolutely okay to be going through difficulties right now. It's okay to have uh, challenges when it comes to readjusting to life. It's okay for our mental health to have struggled and suffered through the quarantine, through the pandemic, through all the problems that we faced, whether they were financial or social or um, personal. Um, it's okay for us to face challenges. It's okay for us to go through difficulties in life and recognize them as problems in our lives. But it's not okay to stay stuck in them. That's not what Islam is about. That's not what our beautiful religion is about. This is not what we are about as people. We're not supposed to stay stuck. We're supposed to learn to live with the challenges that are thrown at us and to grow as people and to thrive as individuals and to take every challenge that's presented to us as that tightening cocoon around us to allow us to strengthen ourselves even more so that when we break out of that cocoon and when we break out of those situational circumstances that we are able to soar and we are able to succeed in the best and the most beautiful way possible. Jazakallah khair guys, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to come and share a little bit about uh, post-pandemic, uh, sorry, what's it called? The new pandemic, our mental health and how it's struggling and suffering. Um, I'm open to taking any questions. I know that I've got a couple of windows here that I'm uh, looking at. So if anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask right now, uh, I'm, welcome, I'm uh, happy to address them. I do have uh, one that I was sent earlier on that I can address while I wait for anyone else. Um, one of the questions that I was asked was if, uh, if I've noticed that people around me don't share the same uh, opinions as me when it comes to post-pandemic, what should I do about it? Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I, I think I've seen this happening a lot and I, subhanAllah, I've actually seen it happening in married couples. Uh, you know, the husband has one perspective and the wife has a different perspective and it builds a lot of challenges. If people don't share your views or if you don't share the views of other people, you're right, absolutely. When we're navigating through post-pandemic life, we are faced with challenges of differences of opinions. Um, some people are okay without a mask. Some people are not. Some people are okay with meeting in the park with, you know, 10, 15 people, other people are not okay. Some people are living their lives at nor as normal. Other people are still sanitizing their groceries. You know, we've got all kinds of differences amongst us. And let's try to look at this as a thing that's beautiful and not a thing that's a problem. First and foremost, our health is an amana upon us. Our health, our bodies are an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're supposed to take care of ourselves. We're supposed to look after ourselves and make sure that we are healthy in the best way possible. So following public health guidelines is extremely important. They're put there for a reason. They're told We're told to do certain things and follow certain ways because it's it's good for us. Nobody's sitting there saying, okay, well, you know what, let's, let's try to make the public, general public unhealthy. 
we do know that COVID is an issue. We do know that the coronavirus is something that is uh, inflicting a lot of people. Now, I'm not going to get into the medical part of it because that's not my area of expertise. So I don't want to comment on any of the what you know myths versus facts. I'm not going to get into any of that uh, um, information. But what I am going to say is that let's try to appreciate each other's differences. It's not necessary that we all agree with each other. It's not. We know this from the times of the Sahabas that um, you know there were differences of opinions amongst them. You know, different people had different ways of life and they they lived their ways you know some people had money some people did not some people were brave other people were not so much we have human nature is to be different from one another and it's okay we are you know in that whole conversation of we're divided into nations and tribes of differences it's okay for us to be different it's okay for you to want to stay at home and uh, still observe uh, parts of that quarantine because it makes you feel safer and makes your family feel safer. But at the same time, it's okay for another family to go out for a walk or go out for a picnic. Remember that the differences are not what weakens us. It's ourselves that we weaken. When we put those differences at our forefront, that starts becoming that weakening factor. COVID impacted um, us at, uh, you know, our, in, it, it impacted our community culture, that Islamic community culture at the very grassroots. It tore us apart in so many ways that we weren't even expecting. So don't let it take that away from you. If you have a difference of opinion than somebody else, learn to respect your perspective but then also learn to respect their perspective and don't let that become a challenge. And subhanAllah, if that is a fight within the home, like if that challenge or that difference of opinion is within the home between a husband or a wife, it won't hurt to start becoming a little bit more accommodating to the other person, you know, listening to the other person's perspective, uh, being respectful to the other person's perspective. I do have a lot of couples who started therapy post pandemic because of this very issue. And uh, it's understandable. It's realistic. It's a real problem. So if you are struggling within the home and if you are not on the same page as your partner or your parents or something, you might want to reach out for some extra help. It might it might, it might be uh, helpful just to be able to get that support that you need to start easing off because what you don't want is uh, post pandemic to uh, sever those relationships or hurt those relationships in ways that they can't be recovered. Okay. Um, I have another question. It says, um, Oh, Okay. It says, are people just using mental health as an excuse? I feel people make a big deal about nothing. Uh, okay. Uh, that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, do people use mental health as an excuse? SubhanAllah, maybe. Maybe some people do. Maybe some people um, do make a bigger deal about things. Maybe that's in their nature. Allahu alam, Allah knows best. Uh, what we try to do is to practice ihsan when it comes to everyone. If somebody comes as a professional, if somebody comes to me and says that they are going through a challenge, I do believe them. Uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for people going through different different challenges and difficulties. Not everybody is the same. And I'm going to, I mean, I don't want to make an assumption here, but maybe the writer of this question maybe has strong resilience skills, has strong uh, adaptability skills. And if that's the case, then uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, that is such a blessing from Allah. But that doesn't lessen the pain and the suffering of somebody else who may be going through the same experience, but with a di very different uh, set of uh, strength skills. So um, I think uh, the message that I kind of want to give out of that is let's just be kind to each other. Let's just be kind to one another. Um, people might seemingly be making a big deal about uh, something that may not be a big deal to you, but you don't know what is in their heart and you don't know what is in their mind. So just coming from that perspective of kindness uh, and uh, coming from that perspective of love and compassion and empathy. And uh, I mean, I, while I was speaking, I just kind of came up with this. Uh, I just kind of realized that maybe if you're feeling burnt out or if you're feeling overwhelmed with somebody who is really struggling, offering them help in different uh, ways and different means, because uh, of course, you know, I mean, if you're a resilient, strong uh, person and you don't feel as impacted, then it's really hard to be around somebody who doesn't share your views or shares views that are very opposing to yours. And if you're feeling that burnout, then really helping that person get the support that they need in order to help them thrive through this, uh, all of this as well, inshallah. Okay, um, there is one last question. Uh, I'm going to take this and then inshallah we'll wrap it up. Uh, we're getting close to time. Um, the question is, how do I help others around me if they are feeling sad or depressed? Okay, uh, I'm so glad that somebody actually brought this up because first and foremost, um, let's be very careful with the word depressed. 
uh, emotional mood up and down is normal for everybody. We all go through good days and bad days and hard days and easy days. And we all, it, our, we're always in movement, right? Human beings are always in movement. Just because you're having a bad day or having going through a hard time or going uh, through something uh, challenging does not mean that you're depressed. Um, I'd encourage everybody to just use that word very carefully. Depression is a mental health condition that people go through that is extremely challenging and extremely difficult and they may need professional help to help them overcome it or sometimes even need medication or sometimes may need greater intervention. So, you know, again, there's different tiers to this. Let's not throw around the word depressed uh, commonly. You know, let's not misuse the word. Um, it is a mental health condition and it is serious. Uh, if you are feeling sad or if you're feeling down or if you're, fe uh, you know, you're, you're noticing, sorry, not you, the question was if somebody else around me, um, offer them a lot of kindness, empathy and compassion, lots of support, be there to listen to them talk, uh, be there to support them in ways that they need to be supported. Sometimes a person's uh, challenges or difficulties or, you know, feeling down and out can be replaced when they're surrounded by healthy people, when they're surrounded by loved ones or, you know, they somebody's there to say, I'm here to listen or I'm here to help you. What do you need? Um, the key question here that I would recommend that we all ask is uh, if you're around somebody who you notice is not the same as they were pre-pandemic or you know post quarantine you're noticing that this person has had changes of behavior to be able to say to them you know i've noticed that you're not the same as you were before and i'm worried about you what can i do right now to help you know what are you going through what can I, how can i help you simply letting somebody talk can be such therapeutic intervention you know, just be a good friend, be a good sister, be a good brother, be a good parent, um, you know, be a good child, be good for other people around you, be a good friend. I don't know if I just mentioned that, but, you know, just be a good person. Allow other people to rely on you and be there for others if they need you to be there for them. And subhanAllah, if the problem persists um, or you notice that somebody is consistently really struggling and it's been a very long time and you're not noticing any change and even though they have healthy support systems and you know they've uh, tried helping themselves or they've tried to work through their problems and they've not succeeded, don't be afraid of asking for professional help. There are lots and lots of resources in our communities. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. You know, if you're in the GTA, you are so truly blessed to have so many resources to turn to to help you through challenges and difficulties. So don't be afraid to reach out for that help. Uh, inshallah, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, if you have any other questions, please, uh, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to Anissa Helpline. That's what they're here for. They're here to support the community. They're here to support women who are in need. There are other numbers and resources to call, so you can always Google. You can look out for professional services as well and see if you're struggling with anything or if you have any questions. Um, if I can answer anything, you can look me up on Instagram under Hina Mirza. That's H-I-N-A-M-I-R-Z-A. -A. Pretty simple. It's my first and my last name. Uh, look me up and and ask me whatever you need to ask me and inshallah the conversation can continue even after the talk has ended uh, Jazakallah khair may Allah ease all the challenges in your lives and the difficulties that any one of us may be facing whether big or small or of any nature inshallah may Allah heal our heart may this talk be a source of wellness and goodness in your lives may Allah use it as a tool to help all of us accelerate and thrive in all of the difficulties that we are facing through this new world that we're having to learn to accommodate to I really appreciate Appreciate the opportunity. I would like to give a shout out to Nisa Helpline again. They have been an incredible resource for so many women out there. I know that I refer a lot of people to this helpline as well, and I encourage people to call them when they're going through challenges and in their darkest hour when they can't reach out to a professional. There's uh, it's helplines like Nisa that are always available and always open and allow people to find a resource when they're struggling. So please, please, please donate generously. Even if it's $10 that you can give today, give them $10. If you can give them five, give them five. SubhanAllah, if you can give them 500, give them 500. Do what you can, do your share, do your part because every little bit makes such a difference. And if you're not able to donate today, share, like their post, follow them on social media, um, you know, really encourage other people to follow them on social media so that we spread the awareness and we spread the word. And last but not least, if you're not able to donate and you're not able to share and spread the word, then at least join the khair and join the goodness by making dua for them. Make dua for the women that are going through challenges and difficulties that do not have homes that are as safe as ours may be, that do not have the means to support themselves the way we may have the support. 
for the people who call into Nisa Helpline and for those counselors who take valuable time out of their own lives to take care of other people and for the admin uh, who puts all of this together and uh, you know reaches out to community resources like myself and says you know let's spread the word let's spread the awareness inshallah may Allah reward all of you in abundance may Allah make it possible for us to be a source of health and healing for others around us and may these deeds and actions of ours be accepted on the day of judgment and help us raise our ranks in our akhira jazakallah khair guys uh, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to share a little bit of your time on this saturday afternoon uh like share and comment and please support nisa helpline as and when you can assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh